Fort Mose was uh, established by decree by Governor Montiano in 1738 that any um, the freedom seekers who were making their way down from the Carolinas, escaping slavery, if they made it down to Spanish Florida, they could live free here at the site of Fort Mose. Now, the requirements to live free here at, Mo at Mose was for the able-bodied men to join the militia and help defend the city from the north, and that um, all the inhabitants of Mose embrace the um, religion of Spain, which was a Catholic religion. Africa is a huge place, and the people who came to Fort Mose were from all over West Africa. If you think about the size of that continent compared to, say, the U.S., you know, you're talking about a lot of cultural diversity because of the geographic spread. So. I can only imagine what it would have been like to hear the languages being spoken, learn about the different cultural practices, and yet people were here blending and blending in with the uh, Spanish traditions as well. So it's definitely a very multicultural international community. The leader of the group at Fort Mose and the head of the militia, Francisco Menendez has to be one of the most interesting people and colorful people in Florida history, maybe even American history. As he grew into manhood, Francisco Menendez became indispensable to his British owners. He could not only do the work of several men, but he also learned to speak several languages. When he first escaped to Spanish La Florida in the early 1700s, Menendez sought refuge with various Indian tribes living in the backwoods to the north. In 1715, Menendez proved himself a fierce warrior, fighting the British alongside natives in a conflict known as the Yamasee War. The Yamasees had once been allies with the Carolina colony, but the British slave raiders had begun to turn on them. Francisco Menendez knew the enemy well and proved to be a valuable fighter for the Yamasees. When the war was over two years later, Menendez headed to St. Augustine. Escaped slaves had been living in St. Augustine for nearly a half century now, and they had become an integral part of the community. In 1738, Governor Manuel de Montiano gave them their own land and chose Francisco Menendez, now a free man, as its leader. The community was located about a mile and a half outside of the city. It was called Gracia Real de Santa Teresa de Mose, or as it's known today, Fort Mose. It was the first legally sanctioned free black community in what is now the United States. This was 125 years before the Emancipation Proclamation. The new fortified settlement had its own church and was comprised of skilled blacksmiths, carpenters, boatmen and farmers. The location of Fort Mose at the edge of town was an important defensive move. There was no better soldier to defend St. Augustine than a man who did not want to become enslaved again. The militia at Fort Mose would soon be tested. A year after the town was established, the largest slave uprising in the British mainland colonies erupted in South Carolina. In response to this revolt, King George II ordered Georgia's troops to take St. Augustine and end the practice of harboring runaway slaves. General James Oglethorpe had founded Georgia and had been its first governor. Although he was actually against slavery, he'd been anxious to take La Florida away from the Spanish for years. King George commanded Oglethorpe to, quote, spare no personal danger in exacting revenge on those slaves who had fled their owners. When Governor Montiano heard that the English were coming to avenge the slave owners, he feared for the safety of the people at Fort Mose. So he orders them to abandon Mose and to come into St. Augustine for their protection, because he figures they'll either be all killed and or captured. And so they come into St. Augustine, and the British just walk right into Fort Mose and take over. But 16 days later, the Spanish, the black militia, and the native allies returned. They caught the British by surprise at daybreak and easily retook the fort. The British called it 
the Battle of Bloody Mose. Though they had won back their land, the village of Mose had been completely destroyed in the battle. The free blacks from Mose move into St. Augustine, and they live in St. Augustine, and they're property owners in St. Augustine, and they become a critical part of the city's fabric. They stayed in St. Augustine for the next 12 years. By 1763, St. Augustine had been the Spanish stronghold in La Florida for nearly 200 years. During that time, the town had fended off every attempt by the British to conquer it. But ironically, it took just a single stroke of the pen for all of that to change. It happened at the end of the Seven Years' War, when Spain was faced with the possibility of losing its valuable port in Havana. It chose instead to give up La Florida to the British. For the people of St. Augustine, this was an unimaginable twist of fate. It meant certain death or enslavement for La Florida's free blacks and natives. There was only one choice. The Spanish are leaving and they take everybody that wants to go with them. And so, by February of 1764, 3,019 people had left St. Augustine for Havana. Every single Spaniard, with the exception of three families, all of the free blacks, the entire city was depopulated. Everybody left. As the Spanish ship sailed away from St. Augustine, the first legally sanctioned free black community in the United States disappeared with them into the horizon. Mm -hmm.